you shoot BB or air gun, you know that pellet traps are designed for .177 caliber pellets, which are standard BB size. Well, this ID Eagle pellet trap claims to be able to withstand 22 caliber pellets from a hunting air gun. Well, we're going to see if that's true on this episode of Moondog Industries. So we have the iDeagle pellet trap here, and even though the label says bullet trap, I can assure you that this is a pellet trap and not meant for real firearms. Uh, And if you know if it should be pronounced iDeagle or iDeagle, please let me know in the comments. So inside we have uh, about 20 packs of these uh, foam padding. Um, I believe they're HVAC sealant, uh, but I don't read Chinese. And if you happen to know what this means, I'll post up a picture here. I believe it's air conditioning or ventilation ducting putty, but um, you know, you tell me. So iDeagle, or however it's pronounced, you tell me. I'll just go with iDeagle. I sent along 20 packs of these, and the intention is for you to use them uh, to help catch the pellets inside of uh, their trap and also to reduce noise. Okay, in the rest of the box, we have uh, the panels that uh, you assemble to create the trap. Uh, We have a bag with uh, a clip that you attach to your trap to clip on your targets, your paper targets. And we have a total of uh, four panels, four steel uh, metal panels here, and they are pretty hefty. So they're not the the light uh, metal that I'm used to seeing in a lot of uh, pellet traps. Now, I'm going to speed things up for the sake of time. Now, my kit did not come with printed instructions, but they sent me a PDF and it describes how you should assemble the panels in this configuration. And it comes with a set of uh, screws and an Allen wrench for you to connect uh, the panel pieces together to create your sort of triangular box. The panels are steel, I don't know what kind, but the back and the bottom panels, which are designed to take the impact of your projectiles, are substantially thicker than the side panels. They're about four millimeters or over an eighth of an inch thick. The side panels are thinner at about one and a quarter millimeters thick, but they are pretty rigid. They're not going to be bending or denting from just handling it. Now, fully assembled, this thing is pretty hefty at over 10 and a half pounds, and it felt solid and well-constructed. Certainly a far cry from the Crossman plastic and cardboard BB trap that I grew up with. The final step is attaching the clip for your paper targets, and there are a number of positioning holes along the top of uh, the trap. Perhaps maybe too many holes? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So here's your fully assembled pellet trap, and it is pretty substantial. And as I mentioned, it comes with these foam sealant packs uh, for catching uh, the pellet debris and presumably to reduce noise of impact. But let's head out to the range and try it with and without the packs and see what kind of difference that makes. While I get set up at 25 yards, now would be a great moment for you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's absolutely free and helps get this video seen by more people online. So I'm going to be uh, testing this out with my Benjamin Nitro uh, Trail 2. I've got a uh, Sniper uh, ZY, the the new ZY scope on here. And uh, we're going to be shooting, uh, what do we got here? We got uh, Benjamin uh, Round Tops um, hollow points, I think. Well, dimple points, to be quite honest. So we've got, uh, we're going to be shooting the, the Benjamin 22 Cal. Uh, 14.3 grain at our target down range. We're going to shoot uh, 10 shots and uh, we're going to see uh, if any of them ricochet out of the trap for one thing. And I've got uh, some paper on the bottom there to, to see if, the, if any uh, get any spillage on the, uh, on the platform below. Hammer and knock on wood, we'll get all 10 shots in the trap. Uh, I've also I haven't put on the in, the insulation packing uh, absorbing material because I um, we're just going to see how loud it is and uh, if it works without it and then I'm going to put that on. So let's get started. Now for this first test, I have the trap positioned on the ground at 25 yards. All right, a little bit low in this distance, which is not surprising. After putting 10 shots into the target, I went down range to check on the trap. Alright, so 
let's go examine Color Trap and see what it looks like. Now, I've raised up the trap on a barrel now uh, because as it turns out, shooting downward into the trap uh, at the ground from a sitting bench position, I ended up hitting the very flat back panel, uh, almost the very bottom panel of the trap, which is not where it was designed to take hits. And the trap worked, it kept ricochets out. I put the old target below uh, the new target so we can take a look at it. Now the holes were outwards, so that meant that uh, no uh, ricochets popped out. Um, we just got some debris, which I, th I think it did ricochet out a, a bit, and then just hit the back of the paper and then fell forward is what happened. So yes, if you, if you put on those insulation packs, that should absorb some of this ball, uh, but we'll see how it works without those insulation packs first. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move the shooting position up to 10 yards and uh, we'll try it out. All right, we've moved up our shooting position to 10 yards. Now we're gonna try out and see how well this thing survives. Uh, note that the manufacturer stated that this is, uh, was intended for 25 yards, though a lot of people don't necessarily have 25 yards in their backyard. Uh, so I'm gonna go with 10 yards, which is a standard competition distance for air gun. So. Um, one would presume that a pellet trap should be able to uh, survive at this distance, so let's find out. I don't know if it's the closer distance or the fact that we, we are closer to the target itself, it just sounds louder. So probably a combination thereof. After my final shot, I was curious to go check out the trap and see how well it handled 10 shots in a row from this distance. All right, so let's go see where we're at. Okay, from 10 round, I mean 10 yards, Definitely got some spall on the bottom here. Uh, paint, looks like paint chips, some lead, nothing penetrating in the paper. And I don't see any outward holes, so nothing high velocity enough to bounce out. And let's look at the back of it, and the inside of this, and then we'll look at the back. So all the impacts are there, and of course, if you're shooting bullseye targets, you're gonna be hitting the same spot over and over again, to hopefully, if you're aiming for the bullseye. So it's something to be con to consider is you may wanna pick up some targets that are distribute out your aiming point so that you're not always hitting the same spot. But that's something also from the manufacturer's standpoint, they may wanna consider reinforcing just the very center. But let's see how it looks like for the back. Do we get any deformations? Not at all. None at all. I'm looking at it from an angle here. Nothing. So perhaps maybe this could, from say 50 yards, survive a 22 uh, long rifle impact. Not quite sure. Maybe uh, if you're interested in seeing me test that, leave a comment and um, I'll talk to the range master and see if uh, we could do an experiment with that and see if this would survive a 22 from 50 yards, or and if this survived that, maybe we could do 25 yards. But anyway, leave me a comment and I'll see about uh, testing this out because that would require probably, potentially, destroying this thing. So anyway, um, that is, uh, there's our test. 10, 10 rounds at 10 yards, survived, did quite well. Now, we're gonna, let's, let's do phase two of this testing and add those insulation packs. Now, as you can see here, I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting the foam out of its packaging. It was really soft and tacky. The instructions recommend putting the pouches in a fridge prior to applying them on the trap. 
and it was a rather mild day. It was only like 70 degrees, maybe even less, but the foam was already, it was like working with melted taffy or caramel. The instructions say to press the foam onto the angled interior of the bullet trap to capture the pellets. Now I've worked with pellet traps before uh, using HVAC putty, clay, and even just rags, but I usually put them along the bottom in the catch pan rather than in the impact zone. So it'll be interesting to see how well this foam uh, survives direct impact. Okay, we're gonna try something because this has taken forever to take this out of, of the packaging. So I've got a, a suggestion for my cameraman here. Why don't we just open up one side of this packet um, and open it up, take the plastic off of one side as so, and just stick it on. So that actually is a great, that was a great idea. And uh, thanks to my cameraman. And if you have any ideas out there, uh, leave me a comment because um, the other suggestion we got was like, it would be better if this would actually kind of came in a tub instead of individual small packets like this. Now that we have the foam packets on the inside of the trap, let's take 10 more shots and see what kind of difference that makes. It's funny, but I remember when I took that shot and thinking I was a little disappointed that there wasn't much difference in the sound of impact with the foam attached compared to before when there wasn't any foam. But let's listen now to a sound comparison. This is without the foam. And that was with the foam attached. So yeah, not a huge difference, but there is a difference. I continued to fire the rest of the 10 rounds into the trap, making sure this time to aim in different parts of the overall target area, uh, aim for the outer ring in a clockwise fashion to see if there would be any difference in either sound or performance of the trap. All right, so we did get some small. Here's a new, here's a new piece that popped out. Oh, sorry. So we did get some spall. Here's a, a piece that uh, that popped out. It was right there, and there's another. So uh, we did. There is a pronounced reduction in just smaller pieces of, of spall. So uh, nothing popping out through the paper, as far as I can see, in terms of uh, the holes. And yeah, so there's our tall tall hit, those two tall hits there. So it did hit the sealant, even though it did sound loud, or as loud as, as the previous ones. So, yeah, this, I mean, the sealant does help reduce the uh, amount of, uh, of debris and spall that, that, uh, that slips out of the trap. But I did not notice that any subjective reduction in the amount of noise. So. That's just something uh, to consider. Anyway, it does work, and we can, again, just take a look at the back of that. Pristine. I, I see and feel no deformation at all in this rear plate. So I feel confident this will last at least as long, if not longer, than your than other um, pellet traps that I've, uh, I've used in the, in the past. So yeah, I can say that it works. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, uh, please hit that like and subscribe buttons. And if you're interested in picking up uh, this particular pellet trap, I'll include links in, my, in the video description to uh, my article on my uh, blog, moondogindustries.com. So check that out. Uh, use that link because it helps support this channel and it doesn't cost you anything more. And again, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's absolutely free uh, and it helps uh, helps grow this channel and uh, it helps uh, game the uh, algorithm, uh, the big tech algorithm, so that you start seeing more cool content like this as opposed to, I don't know, cat videos and less that's your thing. Anyway, you be safe out there. Moondog, out. We can all do our part to strengthen our sport by taking a noob to the range. Introduce them to a new hobby in a fun, safe way. Start by sharing this video with them on forums, Facebook, TikTok, Telegram, whatever. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.